At the end of your life, what will be your legacy? What will you leave behind for future generations? For the world, join the world messenger, Isabella Lundberg, each week as she brings you a new distinguished guest from the business, sports, or entertainment world to share their success, their struggles, and their lessons. They will share their insights into current hot topics that affect everyone. Isabella facilitates an intimate, vulnerable environment to find the true value of humanity and real leadership. Are you ready for your legacy? The legacy that matters? Hello, hello, my beautiful friends. It's Isabella Lomik here, the World Messenger, and I invite you for another epic episode of Legacy Leader Show. Today, my guest, Rolis Pontoneau, is here with me, and we're disrupting together, guess what? The HR. HR touches in every absolute industry and every company, but not only we are focusing on specific cross-pollinating industries like healthcare or technology, we're also focusing on two pieces, disruption with AI and also with people or human capital. Rollis, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me today. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. I'm super thrilled to have you here on the Legacy Leader Show. I love your work. I always pay attention. What are you putting? Obviously, you're having some really amazing lives that I had a chance to experience firsthand. You're a tremendous host but you are a great storyteller, videographer, and producer of amazing content that people can truly not only engage to learn more about individuals, but also engage and learn more about organizations. So how did you get into that? It it came from a struggle that we were having on a particular um, set of requisitions. We're trying to recruit some nurse practitioners uh, in the Northwest part of the United States. And it was an area where it was very difficult to recruit and we were doing the, the just the normal things you would do, posting the ads on different job boards and whatnot. And we just found we just weren't getting anywhere. In fact, we were we were in danger of losing that client because we were moving so slowly. Uh, and so we were just trying to brainstorm what are some new things we can do. And finally, we stumbled on the idea of why don't we leverage video? And at that time, the video was getting a little bit better in terms of people being able to watch video online. Because if you remember in the old days, uh, yeah. You have to sit there and watch a buffered screen where it freezes and it would start and it'd freeze and start. So it's kind of hard to really communicate things by video back then. But then once we got to around 2016, the internet was a lot better. You could actually watch video and enjoy video. So we said, Let, let's see if we can use this. And we started to try and use video in a few different ways. And we finally stumbled on the way that really works the best that we're using to this day. That is fantastic. And I'm super thrilled that uh, not only you are leveraging that in such a great way, but you're also now leveraging additional technology. And seems like both of us are focused on how, for example, you were disrupting HR piece of organization, right? Which is pain and headache, not only around US and North America, but other parts of the world. Uh, And then also for me, leadership with one amazing tool, which has so much power, which is AI. Could you please share, first of all, how did you get into it and what are you seeing and what are you doing so that others can actually learn from you? I've just always been someone who's kind of into what's the next thing technology wise. And when I heard about AI, especially specifically chat GPT earlier this year, it really piqued my interest. I've been actually studying HI, HI, AI for the past couple of years but it wasn't really until this year that I think AI has kind of taken to the next level with, when you look at generative AI and some of the large language models like chat GPT. There's so many things that are coming out now that can actually make me more efficient in my job on a daily basis versus just something that's cool. It actually has become more functional now. And so we're using it in a lot of different ways. I know a lot of organizations' pain points have been uh, talent and either bringing talent in or having talent actually engage and stay with the organization, help the organization grow. And I know that's an area where you specialize is helping helping leaders to 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 become better and and to develop more leaders. But what I'm trying to do, a lot of my clients is trying to bring some of that talent into the organization externally. And we found that you know to take someone who is looking for that next opportunity, they're already successful. To take them out of that situation and into your situation. You need to be able to be compelling in your story as to what's the reason why, like, why should they want to make that move? And Mm -hmm. to me right now, video is probably the best way you can really tell that story outside of actually pulling them out of their environment, putting them in yours. 
And so we've been using video, specifically short clips, to really kind of grab the attention of folks who are out there because there's just so much noise out there, so many things that are conflicting. Uh, when you're on a job board, let's say like Indeed, there might be 10 different jobs they're looking at. And out of those 10 jobs, how do they really differentiate one from the other? We feel like really video is the only compelling way right now to tell that story and differentiate uh, our clients' organizations from others or other organizations. That is brilliant. I love that you're forefront of innovation, that you keep adopting early on and as a result, elevating and disrupting even more so what is truly needed HR. And I love, actually, you guys said HI, which is human intelligence. How do we really increase that, right? And how do we capitalize on, in essence, that uh, actualizes very well with organizations? And as you mentioned earlier, um, how hard it is to recruit in certain regions, right? With all the changes that we're seen between remote work, back to office or hybrid, or just these different avenues to make it attractive, either company, which you are doing phenomenal job for training some amazing companies or individuals uh, or, or leaders that are actually leading those companies. It's a great way when we now see each other, when we hear each other's voice, but also have an eye-to-eye contact, it creates stronger pool, obviously, and stronger impact in terms of, even though it's virtual, in terms of building rapport, doesn't it? Exactly. You know, one thing I heard not too long ago on a show, and I, I, it resonated with me, is that people don't join uh, organizations or companies, they really join people, right? So they, they become connected with people. And yes. so a lot of times in our videos, that's what we focus on. We focus on the people aspect. So we don't have like a lot of pictures of the building and, you know, other things that are they're not really that relevant. We're looking at, first of all, who would they potentially be working for? So we want to have those people in the videos. Mm-hmm. Then we also want to have who are specific people that'll be working with in the videos that it really highlights the people because that's what, what they're really joining the organization for is generally the people. And so the more that we can highlight those people in the organization in a way that I think is authentic and compelling, along with showing the work environment that they're in, that makes those particular uh, ads more appealing to the audience is what we found. Mm. I love that because a lot of times when we when we dialogue and when we're interacting with people, right? Uh, sometimes also w- when we see each other, we sparks other ideas, creates engagement. And even when we're dealing with the larger group and multiple conversations um, and in settings, it's always great. Feels like we were just there because we get pulled in. And some of the work that I've been seeing, how you'd craft that messaging and storytelling, it's extremely impactful. So do you mind sharing for everybody that is watching and listening that is on fence on three things, doing more videos on individual level, just from their own personal brand or from organizational level and not being as visible as leaders, specifically where it matters the most, and also thirdly, not leveraging AI. What is your message for that? Okay, to make sure I, I want to answer each of these uh, correctly and succinctly. So the first one was individual contribution, uh, how for, for people to really brand themselves individually through the video. Yeah, I think that's important uh, to do that um, because you know, we've all heard the saying that people don't leave organizations, they leave their manager, right? So the, the exact opposite could be true. People could be attracted to your organization based on the managers that you have and leaders that you have. So the more leadership is willing to kind of put themselves out there and show uh, who they truly are, they're going to attract more of those people that are drawn to that personality. I've seen in some cases, organizations try and hide certain personalities or certain leadership, uh, folks in leadership, uh, because maybe they're great at being a leader or whatever they're doing, but they're feeling like certain things about their their personality is off-putting. Well, Just like you think that that's all putting, it actually is an attraction module for someone else. So don't discount the power of personally branding each of your individuals in your organization, especially those who are leaders willing to put themselves out there. When they're looking at, you know, five or six different opportunities that they could be aligning themselves with, and they've seen, let's say it's you, Isabella, they've seen you on several different podcasts, or they've seen you on your own profile they see your personality and they're like, wow, you know, I really like Isabella. I think, I think it's someone who I could really work for. They're more likely to align themselves with that than these other four uh, job descriptions or job ads are looking at where they have no connection whatsoever 
with who the manager is or what their personality is like. They would have to spend their time to go on an interview, whether it's virtually or in person, to find that out. And not everybody's willing to do that. So mm -hmm. give them an opportunity to know a little bit more about your leaders uh, before you put that ad out there so you have those things ready and they can look at those whenever they're interested in your company. That's going to help draw them even more. So I think it helps from that standpoint. And it also can help to show other folks in the organization it's okay to put yourself out there. So if you have the leaders that are doing it, then now you have more of the of the, of the uh, managers below them or perhaps the rank and file members, they're more willing to be in that next video as well. Uh, so I think there's a lot of different advantages for that in terms of the, the first point you mentioned. Now, and I can address the second one. Just I, I forgot what it was. I'm sorry. No problem. And and second one was focusing on actually leadership because a lot of talent is making decision based on who they're going to be working for, right? So if leadership internally is not visible, what is your advice for leaders that are not having strong messaging through the video? Um, I think that sometimes it just kind of gets down to a little bit of coaching. And so, you know, the, the leaders themselves, if they're working with, you know, organizations or with consultants, I know that this is an area of expertise for you. If they're, if they're coaching, being coached with someone like yourself to get them more comfortable to do that, I think that's incredibly uh, beneficial. Um, it, is, it does help in a lot of different ways. It not only helps for recruiting, but it can also help even from a, a retention aspect as well. Um, one of the things I will suggest that I don't see a lot of, and I know that this will help attract more leaders, is them just talking about what are some things that help them to, uh, to get to that level in their career. Because I remember the old saying, success leaves clues. And yes. so if you have leaders that are willing to put themselves out there and how they were, they were able to progress in their career, just having a video about that, even though it's not about a job posting, could actually be very beneficial in not only attracting new members, new uh, potential employees to the organization that are also leaders, but then your existing employees who maybe don't have that day-to-day -day interaction with those leaders, they feel like they're connected with that leader. Mm -hmm. So if you have a leader who's willing to be on camera and talk about themselves and talk about you know, how, they can, how they were able to progress or helping others to progress in their career, just think about the other folks, the pride in the, uh, the feeling that other people in the organization have about not only that leader, but then indirectly about the corporation, the company. I want to stay with this company because I believe in this particular leader, even though even though they only actually even work with that person. They may not hardly ever see that leader, but because yeah. they see them on video, they still have to get a chance to really know them as a person. And so I think that's important, not only for attracting new talent, but it actually could be a very good tool for retaining the ones you have to keep them excited, keep them engaged about the overall organization and the bigger picture, especially the leaders want to talk about the bigger picture of what they're trying to accomplish. That is brilliant. And I love that because again, over time with everything with such a high competitiveness, as you mentioned in certain regions and specifically around, let's say healthcare and talent uh, that is uh, very hard to find in specific regions, what others can do to elevate. A role is just answered, and you guys that are watching and listening cannot miss on this because it's going to be more and more pertinent to share what is that leadership about, right? And what then paints the picture, what kind of culture you're walking in, and is this something you want to self-select and see, see yourself working in those environments? And now, what would you say when we look at now those two components, individual and leadership side uh, and organizational, what do you would suggest where, where you see the biggest opportunity for them to leverage AI? Because I can't tell you, Rollis, how many people are still so much on fence or don't really see that actually AI is not going to ever go away. And specifically, child GPT or similar tools that are out there and the faster, quicker we adopt, accept, including our governance and types of policies and procedures, how we're using it, why we're using it for, um, what would you say, whether I'm missing out or some great examples that you've seen and already being effectively utilized and what others can follow to suit to do the same? There are so many areas I see. I think that it's the easiest thing for each person to see what's going to be best for them is what are some kind of repetitive tasks that I don't really like to do that I would love to have, you know, at my disposal to help me with it? Um, there's a lot of tasks that AI can do to help with that. So I know, like, for instance, in my field in recruiting, um, I may not have time to go through a whole bunch of 
resumes and match them up with job descriptions. Uh, I can easily take a resume and a job description and see how well they match up. And within seconds, AI can tell me where that particular candidate shines and where that particular candidate has some weaknesses in relation to that particular uh, position. Um, another way I could use AI as a recruiter is what I can do is, is let's say I've got this candidate, really talk, I, I talked to them, had a great conversation. I actually recorded the conversation. By the way, I do always ask permission when I talk to someone on the phone. I say, mm -hmm. look, instead of me actually taking notes and being distracted during our conversation, I'd like to go ahead and record this, record this conversation if you don't mind. And I said, oh yeah, sure. So I record the conversation. Then at the end of the conversation, I upload it to some tool that will translate it into uh, words, right? Into text, it'll transcribe it for me. And so there's a number of tools out there. I, I use Whisper right now, which is also an open AI product, which is also the same company that made uh, ChatGPT. There's a number of programs where you can transcribe that audio into text. Then I take that text or that transcript and I ask ChatGPT, I'd like you to summarize this transcript in some nice, easy to read bullet points. I want you to format it. Tell me what the strengths and weaknesses are of this candidate based on the job description. By the way, here's a job description. And so I'll let the, uh, the chat GPT look at the job description and the transcript and see where they match up. Mm. And it is wonderful. And of course, wow. now you may have to do some things like, hey, look, I, I don't, I think you missed this point or this point wasn't exactly right. He actually said this. And I said, oh, I'm sorry. Let me rephrase that for you. And it'll come back and it'll rephrase it because you mm. always have the transcript to compare it. And it just helps to word things. I, I know one tip that I can help with anything. I don't care if you're recruiting, if you're a leader or whatever you're doing. If you're like me, sometimes we're not as malleable or as um, uh, we're not as good at rewording things for different personalities. Because you have certain personalities you're communicating with that like you to be to the point and short. Anything long, they're not going to read it. I tend to be wordy. So what I can do with chat GPT is I say, look, I, I pop in with the, the wording of the email I was going to send. Can you reformat this email in a much shorter, more succinct manner? Because my audience is a CEO that would like very, you know, I like he likes short messaging. And then it will spit out a short message for me. Or conversely, if I'm someone who likes to speak very quickly and succinctly, but my audience, whoever it is, let's say it's a person who's very, very verbose, maybe they like to have lots of details and things like that, then I can ask ChatGPT to do just the opposite. So I think communication. Uh, and obviously, you don't just go just by what ChatGPT spits out. You look at it, you see if this fits your voice, you can give it feedback to regenerate, or you can just fix it yourself. But I think those are a couple of key areas where we can improve on communication. I'm, I could talk all day about this stuff, but those are two things that are kind of top of mind for me in terms of opportunities that are quick and easy uh, where we can incorporate AI into in our, our daily tasks and lives. That is amazing. And I'm glad you shared. And I love those examples. There are so usually the ones that are most time consuming and the ones that truly can, again, not only process things, summarize it, but also compare and contrast. And that is really amazing thing to see. Um, as a lot of times people now is talking about is like, oh my God, it's because so many jobs are going to be replaced. So people also freaking out and don't want to be integrated in business because they're so afraid how they're going to impact their job. So what's your perspective? As like, is it going to be more efficient? I mean, I, I will share mine, but I would love to really hear yours because we want to also dispel some of the myths here, please. Yeah, absolutely. I think that, first of all, AI can help us individually to be more efficient at our jobs. And so those of us who are willing to actually learn about AI and how we can utilize it are going to be that much more of a hot commodity, if you will, in the future. So the likelihood of us being replaced in whatever job we have, if we're utilizing AI, I think is very slow. Uh, and in other cases, it's actually creating new jobs. There are new things that are coming up right now that dude, these are these are job titles that just didn't exist. Now, if you mm -hmm. want to talk about one high paying job right now that's kind of getting some buzz is a prompt engineer. Whenever you put in information into AI, you have to be able to put in information that is going to give you the best output coming back out of it, right? So the better I'm able to communicate with AI, the better results I'm going to get. And those are called prompts. And so mm -hmm. a prompt engineer can say, okay, this particular organization having this issue in this particular area, how can I create a prompt that I can enter into chat GPT or, or whatever, whatever large language model the person is using so we can get the best output coming out? That is a, that's, a, that's a position that didn't even exist a year ago or two years ago. 
I mean, so there are going to be lots <laughs> and lots of new positions that are going to be created. So for every job that's going to be um, that's going to be done away with, I think in a lot of cases there are going to be other jobs or opportunities for new positions. The difference with this is is that different people are going to have to learn new skills, right? So maybe if I did a certain thing that was just kind of perfunctory, kind of a kind of a rote, you know, same old thing every day type position, that's going to be eliminated. But what if I learn this other new skill over here, like prompt engineering or uh, maybe labeling or a number of different things that will fall into the AI category that didn't exist before, right? So I'll have an opportunity, perhaps in some cases, to make more money than I made when I was doing my older job. Mm -hmm. I love what you just said that because also it makes me uh, smile because you, we always know the joke around jobs descriptions when new technologies came out, but they want to still five, 10 years of working experience. So uh, it's like, uh, what level of experience do you have in, in, as, as, a, as a prompt engineer? And then how do you differentiate from the others? And I, I guess it's all the ones who are already tested out, who feel very comfortable. And, and that's how it starts. And then they're going to be the ones who are going to carve the path for the others. And, and as they say, the rest of it will be history. And then in the next decade, we're going to be seeing not only just prompt engineers, but many other positions, as you pointed out, as a result of it. So for all those techies who love innovation, who love technology, who love uh, transformation, this is a great opportunity to apply yourself in so many ways. Um, but I'm curious. I'm hearing some interesting things that are yet to be coming, right? And with industry shifting and you being in a video that even that they can create presentation and they can create a clips and all of these things. I mean, as a guru in a video and your production is amazing, you're not seeing any time soon being replaced, right? Because that human touch is gonna to always be the human touch. Yeah, that that is that is so true. And storytelling, that's another thing that's not gonna go away. Uh, it's true that AI can create stories. That's true. But but in terms of video, the way I like to look at this in terms of uh, AI, which is it's, a, it's another big opportunity here. Some people are looking at it as an aspect of, well, maybe I don't have to be on camera because I can just use AI to do it. I don't look at it that way. I just look at AI as a way that you, it can actually accentuate and get your message out to more people. Uh, one way that we're using AI with our video right now is whenever we are creating a video, we're cre creating an interview, we're very particular on the messaging that's coming out in the video. So we're particular on what questions we're asking to the interview subject and what answers are giving. The reason why is anytime you post that video, like let's just this video right now, if they're watching it on YouTube, uh, YouTube or any other big platform is going to take that, the words that are said on that video, they're going to transcribe it and they're going to push that content out to those who they think are going to be more interested in viewing that content. So if you're being transparent and authentic with what you're talking about, the, uh, the AI or that portion of that platform is going to help you match that, that content that you're putting out there with those who are more interested in viewing it. That's whether you're watching it from an organic standpoint or if you're using the ad platform, that's part of how AI works when it comes to video. That's a great way to, to, to utilize um, AI when it comes to video, uh, which to me is it's, it's amazing when you think about it. They're instantly, because the technology wasn't there five or 10 years ago where you're playing a video and they can instantly transcribe it real time while you're talking live. Um, so that's a great capability. Another thing we're using AI for is for the, of course, the bidding process, being able to figure out how we can bid on certain ads. If we're trying to push it out to a specific audience, we're using AI for that. And now 2023, what's coming up with AI is more video editing with the use of AI. So there's a certain amount of simple edits and cuts that AI can do that will help an editor to be able to edit faster, or in some cases, depending on what level of expertise or professionalism you wanna have in the video, some small business owners or one person, one man shops may decide to actually have the AI do all the video editing for them. Um, so that, that technology is already out there too. That is brilliant. I can listen to this uh, forever because it's exciting, it's exhilarating, and it's also setting us up for massive, massive success. For everybody watching and listening, you guys have to go check Rolla's uh, profile, what he's doing on LinkedIn, uh, look at his company, look at his video productions and everything else, and events that he putting that are amazing, uh, and obviously painting amazing stories that not only we want to be part of it, but also we feel like we already know know people behind or front of those videos. Uh, so with lastly, 
Uh, do you mind sharing, um, obviously, what's next in your bucket list? And I also wanted to emphasize that I see you leading and living your legacy already and already leaving amazing legacy and footprint because all of those things are going to be forever available. They're not going to go away and it's going to be your work, your contribution and impact, right? But I'm curious, what would you like to be known and remembered for, Rollis? Hmm. Well, at a core level, I'd like to be remembered as someone who was a good person who treated other people well and left a positive impact on whoever I've had relationships with. So that's 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 my impact. But in terms of secularly, just as my job, um, I'm really, really interested in doubling down this whole AI thing. So I, I'm not going to leave video. I'm going to continue to do video. But I really am excited about some of the things that's going on with AI. So you're going to see more things coming from me in that space in terms of how we can help uh, use AI in our daily practice or whatever the, the, whatever our organization is trying to accomplish, some of those bigger problems uh, that they want to accomplish that can be accomplished. But AI can't do everything, but there are <laughs> some things that AI can be incredibly effective in. And I would like to be part of that that whole process for, for organizations. So between storytelling and video and AI, the internet section of those two, that's kind of where you want to, I want to be over the next 12 months. That is fantastic and super exciting and thrilling. So uh, everybody, um, again, buckle up, take your notes and apply. And Rolis, where would you like them to go to get in touch or learn more about your amazing work? Probably where you see a lot of my content is going to be on LinkedIn. Uh, but if you're someone who likes to be on TikTok, you like to be on Instagram, you can see, see me there. I would say probably in terms of recruitment, recruitment videos, uh, AI, those sorts of things. You're going to be able to find me on LinkedIn, on TikTok, and soon you're going to see my content on YouTube. Thank you for listening to Legacy Leader Show. If you enjoyed the content and had a positive experience, then please leave us a positive rating. In addition, leave us positive review whenever you are listening on whatever platform there might be. Make sure your friends and family also know about the benefit and value that we provide and what we have to offer. Cheers.